Morning, everybody. Um, the team and I thought it would be um, rather nice, as this pandemic seems to be going on quite a bit, um, that we would have some kind of worship during the week as well as a Sunday morning. Um, so we thought it would be rather nice um, that we could do morning prayer and perhaps we can, as we go on, develop it so that we are having a Zoom meeting, morning prayer, um, or perhaps we'll just pre-record something, um, one of the team saying morning prayer and a, and a little reflection on the daily readings. But I thought to myself, well, actually morning prayer isn't something that we do regularly together. Um, some people I know meet um, before teacup on a Thursday morning and say a shortened version of morning prayer together. Um, but it's not a, a something that is done usually uh, in the church, although I say morning prayer every morning and that's part of my job. My job as a parish priest is to say morning and evening prayer um, every day for, for the parish. But it's usually alone and um, quite often I will do it here in my study. Don't look too hard, it's a little bit messy. Um, or or um, in the summer months, <laughs> um, I will quite often choose one of the churches on a different day and, um, and say morning prayer in one of the churches. Um, but usually I'm alone. Sometimes Andrew will come with me. Um, and uh, Sally and I usually meet on a Wednesday to say morning prayer together. Um, but it, but it's quite a solitary thing. Um, but it's very much not a personal thing, and I think this is something that um, we need to understand about morning prayer. It's not a personal prayer. It's a working prayer. It's an intercessionary prayer. And there are people all over the world, um, millions of people, who will be saying morning prayer using the same readings. Um, so we're all in one, we're all listening to the same readings every morning, the same psalm, um, and praying for each other and for the world. So it, it's a rather special prayer, um, but it's what um, we would call a working prayer rather than a, a personal one. Um, so in your, those of you who had a prayers in time of pandemic book, um, there is a morning prayer in there, so that's probably what we will use. If you're keen to learn more about morning prayer and and to practice it yourself, morning and evening and midday prayers, you will find in this book, um, it's the Common Worship book, um, Daily Prayer. Um, usually it's red, as you see. Um, it does come in other colours, but usually it's a red book. And that has morning, evening and uh, midday prayer for every day of the week, every season of the year. Um, and it soon becomes familiar when you're using it. If uh, and, and that book's available from the Church House Publishing Bookshop. Um, I expect you can get it on Amazon and all other bookshops, or you could ask us to get one for you if you would like to. If you have a smartphone or a, or a tablet, um, or computer that downloads apps, you can have this app. I don't know whether you can see that. That says morning prayer in the Easter season. And and it, um, oh sorry, the light's bad, but it uh, gives you a morning uh, a prayer for each day with the readings. Um, and it's exactly what's in the book, um, but it's just easier to find. You don't have to flip pages because it's all there for you. And now I've just lost it. There we go. Um, so I think it's quite familiar to us, strangely, that um, Muslims pray five times a day. Um, and I think that's quite common knowledge. Um, but it's very odd because it was us Christians that started that. Um, praying five times a day is a, uh, a criti Christian tradition from the very earliest times. Um, and it came about in the very first century um, when Christians would actually meet together uh, to pray together. Um, again, not a personal prayer, but very similar to the kind of prayers that we still do, uh, a morning, daytime and evening prayer. And it would be set by the sun. So uh, at dawn would be morning prayer, um, midday, in the midday sun would be 
the afternoon prayer or the daytime prayer and um, sunset evening prayer. Um, and uh, that's how it happened in, in the rural um, areas. But uh, in the cities, which was then, of course, under the Roman occupation and under the Roman Empire, um, they would keep with the Roman times of day, um, which were um, nine o'clock in the morning, um, midday, and um, and then the ninth hour, which is about three in the afternoon, I think. Um, so those would there be their prayer days, and then gradually Christians began to combine those two, so it became five times a day. So first thing in the morning, um, mid morning, afternoon, midday, afternoon and evening. And and later on the religious groups, those in monasteries, um, would add another um, and would which would be in the middle of the night. And that continues still today in, in monasteries around the world. Um, and you can go and stay in monasteries and join in with their prayers. So that five times a day for ordinary people um, became the norm um, and it was something that was then adopted uh, by the Muslims um, when they uh, came about about 600 years after the birth of Christ. Those practices were already there. So I'm not saying that you have to pray five times or six times a day, that you, um, we can certainly uh, provide you with prayers for that, um, but perhaps at least um, once a day working prayers rather than your own personal prayers. So in between those working prayers, those five prayers, would be personal prayers. Um, and uh, it's rather lovely because it is, although the seasons change the words and um, each day of the week is slightly different, the structure is always the same. And so it starts with early in the morning when you first wake up, um, before you speak to anybody, uh, before you utter any words, you start with, O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. And in the Easter season that we're in, the next response is, In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. In practice, I very rarely um, start morning prayer having not said anything at all. Um, especially if I'm leaving the house. I'm, I would have said something to somebody if I'm leaving the house to say morning prayer in one of the churches. Um, but it's it's rather nice if um, you do wake up in the morning and you've got your phone next to you and you can start morning prayer immediately. And then we always start morning prayer with an acclamation to God. Um, and I'll just read you the Easter season acclamation. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, for you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you've made and praise you for all your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Always an acclamation um, to God for the new day, uh, for everything that will take place in it, and uh, for the beauty of the world. It's very uplifting. Always first thing in the morning, the acclamation. And then usually we're followed by a psalm, um, and there'll be a different psalm for every day. Psalms are fabulous. Um, there's one for every mood. Uh, you know, if you're tired and grumpy, there's a psalm for you. Uh, if you're a bit cross and angry, there's a psalm for you. If you're feeling joy and love, there's psalms for you. Um, very much worth buying a book uh, about the psalms if you're not familiar with them all and, and who is, to be honest. Um, to finding that depth uh, of feeling in the Psalms um, and, and it's so amazing how the one set for the day quite often seems to fit the day. Um, so if we were going to do today's, and I'm not going to go all the way through because we will be here forever, but if we were going to do today's Psalm, um, we would be doing Psalm 8 
O Lord our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of the babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, and you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moons and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? Beautiful Psalm 8, uh, a shortened psalm that morning, so um, this morning. So going on in our morning prayer after the psalm, um, we will say a canticle. And a canticle is uh, usually made up from um, words from, from the Bible, from the Old and the New Testament quite often joined together. And then we'll have our daily readings. Um, a reading from the Old Testament and the New Testament. So let me read this morning to you uh, the reading set for today from the New Testament and um, it is from Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to the end. And Paul is writing to the Christians in Colossae and he writes, Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, have now been reconciled in his flesh and body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he has powerfully inspired within me. This is the word of the Lord. And you might recognise the beginning of that Colossians reading, the earlier, the earlier paragraphs in that, where we get our creed from, um, partly where we get our creed from, and everything that is in our liturgy uh, that we say on a Sunday morning or during the week is derived from the words of God. Um, it's not man-made. Um, all our liturgy is, is uh, born of the scriptures of God's and Jesus's own words. So after we've had a scripture reading, we will read um, the Gospel Canticle, um, which is always the same. Every day um, we will say um, the Benedictus, the Song of Zachariah, um, which I won't say to you now because um, you're going to get fed up with me in a moment. Um, but it's, it's said every day, every morning. Um, and so it becomes very familiar and it becomes a bit like um, when you say the Lord's Prayer, you don't have to think about it. Um, 
And in some ways that seems wrong, that we're not thinking about what we're saying. But in another way, it, it allows the words of God just to, to wash over you and to be part of you. And you are part of God while you're saying it. Um, try it. You'll see what I mean. Following Benedictus, we have our prayers. And as I said, our prayers are not personal. They're prayers for the world. And, and we have um, a, a setting for the prayers. Not quite like intercessions, because they're all our own words. Um, but just an idea of what we should pray for. So um, we pray for the day and its tasks. So everything that we're going to do, the people that we meet, um, pray through the day and asking God to be with us. We pray for the world and its needs. Well, that one can go on forever. Uh, and then we pray for God's church. Um, and that's the people, obviously, not the buildings. Um, we pray for those. And as a priest, that's when I'm particularly praying for all of you. Um, and for, for any prayers that you've asked me to say. And for people um, to be remembered in, in our prayers. Um, and I pray also for all of those in our communities that don't come to church but are what I um, have is the cure of souls so everybody in, in our parishes in Ampfield, in North Baddersley and in Chilworth um, I have the cure of their souls I have the um, instruction to look after their souls so I pray for everybody um, but particularly those I've been asked to pray for uh, and that's um, each of us do pray for those we know are in need of prayer um, and, and for the world around us. We finish our prayers with the collect for the day. Um, there's one set for every week and it will be the prayer that we prayed on Sunday morning will be the one we continue throughout the week. Um, finishing that with the Lord's Prayer in um, whichever way you prefer to say it, in the traditional or more modern version. And, uh, and then we finish asking God to bless us. In Easter we add our Alleluias. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And that ends our daily prayer. Um, so I hope you... Um, that was informative to you that um, you enjoyed hearing uh, a bit about why we do morning prayer and what it's all about and uh, and perhaps you would like to join myself and other members of the team during the week praying morning prayer together so um, I will see you soon either at um, a zoom coffee morning if um, they are successful on Sunday morning or maybe for morning prayer God bless you have a good day.